Income tax 2023-2024. Business use of your home qualifying for a deduction. Get ready and some coffee because we need to know a lot of information to do income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Most of this information can be found in publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers Listed Property, and more tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The Schedule C ultimately rolling into line one income of the formula. Noting the Schedule C itself basically a funny income statement. Having business income minus business expenses resulting in, in essence, net business income, which is what rolls in from the Schedule C to line one income of the formula. The formula outlining the calculation on the Form 1040 of which we see the first page here, noting that the Schedule C ultimately rolls into line number eight. That's additional income from Schedule 1. This is the Schedule 1. Additional income and adjustments to income part number 1. Additional income Schedule C rolling into line 3. Business income or loss. This is the Schedule C. Profit or loss from business has an income statement format. Income minus expenses. Expenses are what we're looking at here. Basically the business deductions usually having the most different kind of categories within the expenses. So some expenses being more difficult than others, such as the home office expense. Some of the complications with the home office expense are not that it's difficult to know whether they qualify as an ordinary and necessary expense. You would think that if you have a legitimate home office that it would qualify as ordinary and necessary type expense, although we will have to take a look at the formal definitions to qualify as a home office deduction. But we also have to be breaking out the business portion from the personal portion because obviously the general rule for being able to deduct items on the Schedule C is they were used for business. That means that when we do our bookkeeping, we're gonna try our best to be breaking out the personal from the business, the business side being deductible, expenses on going to Disneyland or buying normal groceries and whatnot, typically those are personal and not deductible, but some things we can't break out as, as well as we would like, such as if we work out of our home with a home office, then we're paying for the home and either we're paying for the home because we own the home, in which case we already paid for the home and are possibly having a loan that we have to pay down on it, which would be the interest on it as well as property taxes related to it. And we might be able to depreciate the home or we're renting the home, in which case we're paying monthly fees, monthly rent for the home. And you would think that part of those expenses might be able to be allocable to the business portion. If they are, then the question is, well, how can we calculate those? How can we break those out? Which is difficult, not just from a tax standpoint, but also blending what we do on the tax side to what happens on the bookkeeping side. Because if there's a home office, there's nothing the bookkeeper can do to make the books perfectly easily transferable from the income statement from like a software like a QuickBooks to data input into our system. 
because the bookkeeping side will be dependent on on cash flow typically that's driving transactions and we're going to have to of course do something to that to allocate between business and personal which is a tax adjustment we'll typically have to do if there's a home office on the tax side which means we're going to have to get into a little bit of the bookkeeping side of things for that tax adjustment generally okay qualifying for a deduction generally you can deduct items related to your home such as mortgage interest real estate taxes utilities maintenance rent depreciation or property insurance as business expenses so if you have a home office what are the things related to the home and we're thinking about those types of things that usually you pay for the entire home which then would have to be allocated to part of the home so clearly if you own the home you have mortgage interest because you have a loan against the home and that you might be able to deduct you already might be deducting it on the schedule a but you might be able to break it out between the schedule c and the schedule a same with the property taxes on the home if you own the home you're probably paying property you will be paying property taxes typically once again they can typically be deducted on the schedule a but you can break them out between here and the schedule a utilities the heat the the air conditioning that kind of water and whatnot that is something you usually pay on an entire home or an entire apartment uh, type of basis and therefore you're gonna have to allocate the portion that you think is attributable to the home office maintenance now obviously if the maintenance was done on the office itself you would probably be able to deduct you would think the whole thing because it's on the office but if the maintenance was on like the roof of the home then it's impact in the entire home and you would think you would have to allocate it to the business and the personal rent if you rent then you're probably not going to have mortgage interest or real estate taxes because you didn't buy the home you're renting the home and therefore you might be able to deduct part of the rent depreciation if you rent the home you don't have to depreciation tip typically you might have depreciation if you bought the home if you bought the home then if you bought it for just cash then you still could get a deduction because then part of the home that you paid for you would be able to allocate you would think the cost over the useful like life like a depreciable asset so so that would be if you purchased a home then property insurance similar kind of thing and uh bus as business expenses okay so however you may be able to deduct, deduct expenses related to the business use part of your home if you meet specific requirements even then the deductible amount of these items may of expenses may be limited so obviously the idea would be here you generally would not be able to deduct these items if they were personal however you may be able to deduct expenses related to the business use uh, part of your home if you meet specific requirements even then the deductible amount of these types of expenses may be limited so use this section and figure a to decide if you can deduct expenses for the business use of your home so to qualify to deduct expenses for business use of your home uh, you must use part of your home uh, exclusively and regularly as your principal place of business so now we have these terms that we have to make sure are in play here exclusively and regularly for our uh, for our principal so here we have the terms exclusively regularly and principal place of business so see principal place of business later exclusively and regularly as a place where you meet or deal with patients clients or customers in the normal course of your trade or business so obviously this gets will look a little bit different depending on the type of business uh, that we are in which we'll dive into in a little bit more detail shortly so in the case of a separate structure that is not attached to your home in connection with your trade or business so in other words you've you've got your home but then that's where you live and now you have this separate structure that is, is your property but basically it's not the that's a separate structure so we have the rules here on a regular basis for certain storage use see storage of inventory of products uh, supplies later uh, for rental use see publication 527 uh, or as a daycare facility now the daycare facility has its own kind of special rules so we have our general rules up top which possibly you're going to be thinking of situations where where you're in a type of business and you do like the bookkeeping and managing 
of the business from a home office, uh, oftentimes service-based businesses. And if you do the bookkeeping from the home office, that's one visualization that we might do. Another would be that if we have a separate structure where we're storing inventory, then again, that would be a different set of rules that we, we want to make sure that we kind of qualify because it's a kind of a different scenario. And another scenario would be for daycare facilities, uh, which is which is fairly common, but the daycare facilities might have some different kind of rules because instead of visualizing, of course, an office space where you're going to be doing the work in a daycare facility, you're usually using a part of the home that is personal for, for sometimes and then it's it's going to be used for the daycare for sometimes because it's going to be the living parts of the home so you would think you might need some special rules in place if you have a daycare facility which we might not go into in a lot of detail so so that's a special case so if you're dealing with a daycare you might want to dive into that in more detail so exclusive use so to qualify on so now we're looking at these diff definitions what does it mean to be exclusive use to qualify under the exclusive use test you must use a specific area of your home only for your trade or business so it means what it says we want to be using that part of the home for business so typically under normal conditions we would be thinking or imagining of a home office where we do at least our accounting or managerial work of the business as a separate place it's not like we're, we're, we're in the living room or, or in the main room that we hang out in and, and, just, and then we just pull out the laptop in the middle of it or something like that, right? It'd be a separate area. So the area used for business can be room or other separately identified space. So the question here comes up then, well, what if I have a house that's a nice open house and I, I, don't, I don't need a whole room but I carved out a piece of the room. So obviously if it was a separate room itself, then it's pretty straight cut if you use that room strictly for business. But what if I cut out a portion of, of the room and that piece of the room I use strictly for business? Do I have to put up a wall? Do I, can I put up a fake wall? Can I just say, hey, I've allocated this part of the room uh, for business? That's when it gets a little bit more difficult. So the space does not need to be marked off by a permanent partition so you don't need the permanent partition in order to say this is my separate workspace so you do uh you do not meet the requirements of the exclusive use test if you use the area in question both for business and for personal purposes so in other words if you're just talking about your living room and you throw a laptop on it and 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 then and then that's both your business and personal use that's probably not going to do it right it's got to be exclusively business all right example you are an attorney and use a din in your home to write legal briefs and prepare client tax returns your family also uses the din for recreation the din is not used exclusively in your trader business so you cannot claim a deduction for the business use of the din so here we have your the problem here, of course, being your family also the, uses the den for recreation. So now you have an excuse to tell the kids and, and whatnot to get out of the den. Get out of my den! You're gonna mess. You're gonna make me pay taxes on it, and then I won't be able to pay for your for your allowance. So exceptions to the exclusive use test. So you do not you do not have to meet the exclusive use test if either of the following applies. So you use the part of your home in question for the storage of inventory or product samples discussed next. So inventory is another kind of special area that might have a, a bit of an exception related to it than the normal scenario where we're thinking of, if, of it like our home office where we do our executive work, for example. You use the part of your home in question as a daycare facility. So once again, daycare, somewhat of a special scenario. So very special scenario. So note, with the exceptions of these two uses, any portion of the home used for business purposes must meet the exclusive use test. So with the exception of these two uses, any portion of the home used for business purposes must meet the exclusive use test. All right, storage of inventory or product samples. So now we're going into one of the more specialty areas, one of the kind of the exception areas. If you use part of your home for storage of inventory or product samples, you can deduct expenses for the business use of your home without meeting the exclusive use test. However, you must meet all of the following tests. Uh, you sell products at a wholesale or retail as your trade or business. 
you keep the inventory or product samples in your home for use in your trade or business your home is the only fixed location of your trade or business uh, you use the storage space as a regular uh, as a regular basis uh, the space you use you use the storage space on a regular basis the space you use is a separately identifiable space suitable for storage let's look at an example all right your home is the only fixed location of your business of selling uh, mechanics tools at retail you regularly use half of your basement for storage of inventory and product samples you sometimes use the area for personal purposes the expenses for the storage space are deductible even though you do not use this part of your basement exclusively for business so you're still doing something personal you play like video games down there from time to time but it's got the inventory thing so you don't have the exclude okay so regular use so to qualify under the regular use test you must use a specific area of your home for business on a regular basis so this was the other key term exclusive now we have the regular use that we typically would have to meet usually thinking of a scenario where it's like our home office and we're like the executor and that's where we do our accounting and decision making possibly so incidental or occasional business use is not regular use so it obviously it has to be a regular part of your business you must consider all facts and circumstances in determining whether uh, your use is on a regular basis trade or business use so to qualify under the trade or business use test so obviously it needs to be related to your business uh, you must use part of your home in connection with a trade or business so if you use your home for a profit seeking activity that is not a trade or business you cannot take a uh, a deduction for its business use and that of course kind of makes sense because if you're not using it if the trade if you're using a profit seeking thing that isn't a trade or business then what is it well it might be like a hobby in which case it's not being pursued as a business and therefore any income from it isn't going to be reported on the schedule c it's going to be reported elsewhere which means that you're not going to have uh, a a business use of the home deductible that typically connects to the schedule c and and because you it won't be a, a deductible it won't be a business expense it might be investment expense for example which again isn't business and therefore you wouldn't have a schedule c and if you don't have a schedule c you would typically think that you wouldn't be deducting the business use of the home for a sole proprietor okay example you use part of your home exclusively and regularly to read financial periodicals and reports clip bond coupons and carry out similar activities related to your own investments you do not make investments as a broker or dealer so your activities are not part of a trade or business and you cannot take a deduction for the business use of your home so you're saying hey look i i hang out here and, and i and i do my stock uh research well you're not in the business of stock trading and therefore don't have a schedule c and even though you're trying to generate income it's passive income then it's investment income you don't have active activity on a schedule c so you don't really have anywhere uh to deduct it because it's not an actual sole proprietor business activity principal place of business so you can have more than what so here's an issue that often comes up and what does it mean to be basically the principal place of business okay so you can have more than one business location including your home for a single trade or business to qualify to qualify to deduct the expenses for the business use of your home under the principal place of business test your home must meet your principal place of business for that trade or business so de to determine whether your home is your principal place of business you must consider the relative importance of the activities performed at each place where you conduct business and uh, the amount of time spent at each place where you conduct business so in other words you might have some other location where you do business as well as well as a home office well it has to be a principal place of business to get the home office expense so now the question is of these two locations which one is my principal place of business obviously if i want to deduct the home office i would like it to be my home office 
And so then we have to get into, well, which of the princip- which of the places is going to be, in essence, kind of more important? Where do we spend basically more of our time with it? Sometimes, however, it, com- it can come down to where do I do my executive or business planning uh, work? Because, because that might be at the home, for example, whereas another location might be a place that you meet clients or you go to client locations to, 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 to meet, but you do the decision making possibly in your home or something like that. All right. So your home office will qualify as your principal place of business if you meet the following requirements. You use it exclusively and regularly for administrative or management activities of your trade or business. So again, so now you're thinking the place where I, I'm doing my executive work, I'm doing my bookkeeping, I'm doing my decision making uh, processes, my executive kind of functions uh, is, is an, one thing. And again, that would be the thing that you would think might qualify for a lot of small businesses as their home office, because that's where they do their executive or management activities. You have no other fixed location where you where you conduct uh, substantial administrative or management activities of your trade or business. In other words, the other location that you have, maybe you're doing other things there, like meeting the clients there or doing other stuff, but it's not, maybe that's not your office. Whereas your office where you do your administrative stuff is, you know, the home office and therefore possibly your executive area. Let's take a look at a flow chart. You can deduct business use of the home expenses. Uh, do, do not use this chart if you use your home for the storage of inventory or product samples or to operate daycare because those are the exceptions. Let's look at the flow chart. So start here. Uh, is part of your home used in connection with a trade or business? Uh, if no, no deduction. Obviously, it has to be part of the trade or business. Is yes, we go to the next one. Are you using part of your home as an uh, employee? If yes, we don't get a deduction. Why? Because if we're a W-2 employee, we don't have a Schedule C to deduct it on again. The idea would be there that that's part of the that's part of the relationship between us and our employer. One of the downsides of being an employee is we don't typically get uh, those kind of uh, deductions. And then if no, uh, is the use regular and exclusive? If not, then no deduction because those are the tests we have to meet. If yes, uh, is it your principal place of business? So if it is your principal place of business, then we the deduction is allowed. So obviously, if that's where you do all your business, that would be pretty straightforward. And we just looked at the rules for principal place. But if no, uh, do you meet patients, clients, or customers in your home? So if it's not your principal place of business, it's not the place where you do your executive work and whatnot, then you still might have a situation where uh, you uh, do you meet patients, clients, or customers? It's where you meet your patients, clients, or customers in. Uh, if yes, deduction allowed. If no, next question, is it a separate structure? So if it's a separate structure, then you may be able to have the deduction. All right, so that's the flow chart. So if after considering your business locations, your home cannot be identified as your principal place of business, you cannot deduct home office expenses. However, see the later discussion under place to meet patients, clients, or customers and separate structure for other ways to qualify to deduct home office expenses. So in other words, this is kind of the flow chart we're thinking. We're saying, can I deduct my home office? Well, it has to be used generally for business, but there are exceptions to the general rules being the daycare facility and inventory facility. So if we put those off to the side for now, and we're thinking that we do work in the home office, it has to be used for business purposes uh, generally. And then usually we're thinking then that it has to be our principal place of business, which usually means that's kind of where we do our executive work, our decision making, our bookkeeping and, and stuff. We're being like the CEO of our sole proprietorship uh, in that area, except there are possibly exceptions to that rule of principal place in, of business if you have a situation where you meet the patients, clients and customers. So those are the situations 
uh, that might be different for the principal place of business. And then again, you have those special circumstances with the daycare and the inventory. All right, administrative or management activities. There are many activities that are administrative or managerial in nature. The following are examples. So if the IRS came over and said, hey, are you doing administrative or example? You know, we have to say what activities we're doing. We're billing customers, clients, patients. We're doing the bookkeeping there. Keeping books and records, ordering supplies from there, setting up appointments from there, forwarding orders or writing reports, administrative or management activities performed at other locations. The following activities performed by you or others will not disqualify your home office from being your principal place of business. So if I do these things at another location, does that mean that I I can't use my home office because I'm doing these administrative things elsewhere. We're saying, no, these are the things that uh, the following activities performed by you or others will not disqualify your home office. So you have others conduct your administrative or management activities at locations other than your home. For example, another company does your billing from its place of business. Well, you still are managing being the CEO from your home office telling the other person to do your billing from somewhere else. So you're really kind of still directing everything, you know, from your home office, you would think in that situation. You conduct administrative or management activities at places that are not fixed locations of your business, such as a car or a hotel room. So clearly, if you're doing managerial stuff from your car or a hotel, those can't be your principal place of business, you would think, because they're temporary. So you occasionally conduct minimal administrative or management activities at a fixed location outside your home. So if you're doing some of this managerial stuff at a different location outside your home, you're getting a little bit more risky there as to whether it would qualify as your principal place of business. But if, you, if your majority of work was done at home, you think you might be okay. You conduct substantial non-administrative or non-management business activities at a fixed location outside your home. For example, you meet with or provide services to customers, clients, or patients at a fixed location of the business outside your home. This would be the thing you would think would come up most often, meaning you go outside your home possibly as a service kind of business and you're meeting with clients in some other location. However, that other location is not the place where you generally do the administrative uh, type of stuff. That's where you're meeting the clients, but you're doing the CEO stuff from the home office. Okay, you have suitable space to conduct administrative or management activities outside your home, but choose to use your home office for those activities instead. In other words, you could do them elsewhere. You have the ability but you're not, you're doing them from the home office. Okay, example one, Sid is self-employed plumber. Most of Sid's time is spent as customers' homes and offices installing and repairing plumbing. Sid has a small office at home that is used exclusively and regularly for the administrative and management activities of the plumbing business, such as phoning customers, ordering supplies, and keeping the books. So Sid writes up estimates and record records of work completed at the customer's pr premises. Sid does not conduct any substantial administrative or management activities at any fixed location other than their office, their home office. Sid does not do direct billing. Sid uses a local bookkeeping service to bill their customers. So Sid's home office qualifies. So in other words, he has these other locations he's doing work at. He spends most of his time outside of the home office, but he's not doing administrative stuff out there. He's doing plumbing stuff out there. He's doing the administrative stuff in the home office. He hires someone else to do his billing for him. But the billing that the other person does it doesn't mean that that's their home office. He told the other people to do the billing because he's the CEO of his business. He runs, he's the owner. So he did that from his home. So you would think that the home office would qualify. So his, Sid's home office qualifies as their principal place of business for deducting expenses. Uh, Sid uses the home office for the administrative or managerial activities of the plumbing business and has no other fixed location 
uh, where these administrative or managerial activities are conducted. Since choice to have billing done by another company does not disqualify the home office from being their principal place of business, Sid meets all of the qualifications, including principal place of business, so the expenses subject to certain limitations, explain later, disclaimer, uh, can be deducted for the business use of the home. Example two, Alex self-employed sales representative for several different product lines. Alex has an office in their home uh, that they use exclusively. Alex has an office in their home. Um, Alex must be ma married or something. Or, and that Alex has an office in their home that they use exclusively and regularly to set up appointments and write up orders and other reports for the products Alex uh, sells. Alex occasionally writes up orders and sets up appointments from their hotel room while away on business overnight. Alex's business is selling products to customers at various locations through their assigned territory. To make these sales, Alex regularly visits customers to explain the available products uh, and takes orders. So Alex's home office qualifies as their principal place of business for deducting expenses for its use. Alex conducts administrative or managerial activities there and they have no other fixed location where substantial administrative or management activities are conducted. So clearly, once again, he works a lot outside of his home, but he does the managerial work in the home office. He does some managerial work on the road in hotel rooms and his car, but those aren't fixed locations and therefore doesn't disqualify the home office, you would think. So the fact that Alex conducts some administrative or management activities in a hotel room, not a fixed location, does not disqualify the home office from being their principal place of business. That's just what I said. I told you. See? So Alex meets the qualifications uh, indicating principal place of business. So the expenses subject to certain limitations explained later, disclaimer, can be deducted for the business use of the home. Another example, number three, Taylor is a self-employed uh, anesthesiologist. Why do you have to make such a complicated word that he does? Couldn't he just do something simple? Ta whatever. Ta ta Taylor spends the majority of their time administering anesthesia and post-operative post care in three local hospitals. You're making me sound stupid here, tax code, with these big words, these medical terms. One of the hospital provides a small shared office where Taylor could conduct administrative or management activities. Taylor very rarely uses the office the hospital provides, but instead uses a room at home that has been converted to an office. So in this case, he has the capacity to do administrative office elsewhere because he has the office there, but he, don't, he doesn't use it. Taylor uses this room exclusively and regularly to conduct the following activities, conducting patients, uh, surgeons, and hospital uh, regarding scheduling, preparing for treatments and presentations, maintaining billing records and patient logs, satisfying continuing medical education requirements, reading medical journals and books. So Taylor's home office qualifies as their principal place of business for deducting expenses for its use. They keep on saying like Taylor's home and then for their, for their principal place, it's like, but anyway, Taylor conducts administrative or management activities for, for their business. It's really throwing me off, man. T Taylor conducts administrative or management activities for their, isn't it his business? Taylor, uh, is it a partnership? I don't, anyway, for their business as an anesthesiologist there and at no other fixed location where substantial administrative or management activities for this business are conducted. So Taylor's choice to use the home office instead of the one provided by their hospital does not disqualify their home office from being their principal place of business. Who's this they? They never mentioned the other person that Taylor... 
Taylor's performance of substantial non-administrative or management or non-management activities at fixed locations outside their home also does not disqualify their home office from being their principal place of business. All right, Taylor meets all the following all the qualifications, including principal place of business, so the expenses subject to certain limitations, disclaimer explained later, can be deducted for the business use of the home. So more than one trader business. What if you've got more than one trader business? So the same office can be the principal place of business for two or more separate business activities. Whether your home office is the principal place of business for more than one business activity must be determined separately for each uh, of your trade or business activities. So you could have a tax return where you have multiple different Schedule C's because you have different businesses you're dealing with both of them having, in essence, the same home office. So you must use the home office exclusively and regularly for one or more of the following purpose as the principal place of business for one or more of your trade or businesses as a place to meet or deal with patients, clients, or customers in the normal course of one or more of your trades or businesses if your home office is a separate structure in connection with one or more of your trade or businesses. Now, obviously, if you have multiple trader businesses and you're using the home office for them, you would think that you can't double dip, meaning you can't like try to, to deduct the rent in multiple different places, as we've, we've already kind of seen where when we're talking about like, can you deduct if you own the home the interest on the mortgage interest. Well, it might have been deductible on the Schedule A, but if you have the home office, you might be able to deduct it on the Schedule C, in essence, rolling into the Schedule C, but you can't deduct the full amount on Schedule A and Schedule C, right? You have to allocate between the two. You would think you would have a similar kind of issue. If you had two businesses, now you've got the home office and you have the interest, you would think you would have the personal portion and then the amount that's allocated to the businesses, which would need to be allocated between the two businesses in some way, shape or form, possibly, right? You can't, in other words, you can't take double up on the same expense uh, and take twice the deduction because you have two home offices. I, you know, that would be doubling up. All right, place to meet patients, clients or, or customers. So if you meet or deal with patients, clients or customers, in your home in the normal course of your business, even though you also carry on business at another location, you can deduct your expenses for the part of your home used exclusively and regularly for the business if you meet both the following. You physically meet with patients, clients, or customers on your premises. So this is the exception to the rule. Remember, when we're looking at the principal place of business, we were saying, usually we're thinking about that as our home office where we work and do our CEO, executive bookkeeping and that kind of stuff in the home office. But the exceptions were, what if I meet the clients there? So that, so now we're diving into that a bit more. So if you, you physically meet with patients, clients or customers on your premises, uh, their use of your home is substantial and integral to the conduct of your business. Doctors, dentists, attorneys, and other professionals who maintain offices in their home will generally meet this requirement. Uh, using your home for occasional meetings and telephone calls will not qualify you to deduct expenses for the business uh, use of your home. So if you have them over just for a couple drinks or something, that's probably not that's probably not what they're talking about. So the part of your home you use uh, exclusively and regularly to meet patients, clients, or customers does not have to be your principal place of business. All right, example, Sam, a self-employed attorney, works three days a week in their office, then works two days a week at home in a office used only for business. Sam regularly meets clients there. The home office qualifies for a business deduction because Sam meets clients there in the normal course of their business. Separate structure. So here's the other exception to the general rule. We have that separate structure. You can deduct expenses for a separate freestanding structure, such as a studio, workshop, garage, or barn if you use it exclusively and regularly for your business. The structure does not have to be your principal place of business or a place where you meet patients, clients, or customers. Example, 
Bobby operates a floral shop in town. Bobby grows the plants for their shop in a greenhouse location at home. Bobby uses the greenhouse exclusively and regularly for their business so Bobby can deduct the expenses for its use subject to certain limitations. Disclaimer described later.